an island made from rock and stonework. To add to this insane possibility, some of them are so huge that they can be seen from space too. Yes, you heard it right. I know that you're finding it hard to believe, but trust me, the boy is known to be a genius at doing the impossible. The history backs this up, as you can see it transform from a small desert village to the most sophisticated city in the world ever. Who would have thought something like this is possible? But I'm sure it's itching you guys to know how the Bai has created an artificial island. How did they design them in the first place? How can they withstand the tides? Let's find out, shall we? These islands were made through a process called land reclamation. I know this sounds too technical, but let me explain to you how this works. From the coastal regions of Dubai, millions of cubic meters of sand are drenched and dumped into specific formations. So here they use GPS technology and the sand that was sprayed will be compacted into precise shapes. Vinro compacting is where they stabilize these granular soles like loose sand and gravel and turn them into stable and dense. Shaping up these mounds of sand is taken care of by GPS technology. These million tons of sand are acquired from deep seas that are situated 6 nautical miles from the coast of Dubai, and loads of sand have been dug from these Persian and Arabian Gulf floor. They make sure to protect it with millions of tons of rock. The strong currents and seasonal Shamal winds that blow from Iraq pose a threat. And this answers your question as to why these islands are not being washed away by the tides. Here's the thing. These rocks that line the islands have a geotextile membrane that prevents the sand from being washed away. These massive archipelagos are the ultimate paradise destinations in Dubai. But the question that lingers is, why Dubai? The mastermind behind these transitions is Dubai. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Prime Minister of UAE, seems to create quite a legacy. His plans to create more coastal real estate. And as we have already figured out, Dubai catches the eye of the richest of rich tourists. It's not just because of that. Dubai runs with millions of tourists and accommodating and hosting them was a big problem to be solved. Now that we know who and how these are being created, let's see how these have been molded into sites like this. Its tourism industry now knew no bounds and they slowly turned their eyes on the sea. That's how this cluster of three man-made islands was created. Number 1. The Palm Islands, Palm Jumeirah and Palm Jabal Ali Palm Jumeirah is shaped like a palm tree and is surrounded by an almost 7 mile long crescent shaped island that is the first to be constructed. After the driver surveyed the seabed and the blasted mountain rock was used to build the crescent shaped island, unlike the other man made islands, which are composed of metal and concrete, these are made up of sand and rocks. If you think this would be a small island considering the difficulties, then you're in for a surprise. This is as huge as 600 times the football field of four times the size of London's Hyde Park, making it the largest man-made island ever in the world. Not to forget, it's the most expensive project in Dubai. It cost around $12 billion, but at the opening ceremony, it is valued at $40 million. And it is said that the show at the opening ceremony has the largest fireworks display. Well, we wouldn't expect anything less from Dubai after seeing all the wonders they've created. If you look into the design of the island, then you can observe a 100 meter wide opening on both sides of the crescent. This might seem beautiful architectural design, but there's more to that than what reaches the eye. Gaps allow water to circulate every 13 days, preventing it from being static. And then there is a 6 meter wide broad walk that stretches along the length of the crescent. As I said, the lowest layer of this is sand, which is covered by erosion resistant water permeable geotextile. To add to this, they covered it with at least one ton of rocks and two layers of stone. Each of them weighs around six tons, which is how it acts as a strong barrier. These rocks are from various quarries in Dubai. The 3.2 billion cubic feet of loose ocean sand is saturated with water jets and then is vibrated with probes to increase its density. When water is added to the desert sand, it liquefies. So they use a technology called differential global positioning system and ensure the sand placement. But if you're thinking about why the desert emirates, which has billions of tons of sand, is not used, then you're heading the right way. The desert sand is not the correct grain size and composition. 
whatever the sound accumulated from the Persian Gulf was sprayed through that GPS technology as I said before. Nakheel Properties kicked off the project in 2001 and ultimately added 40 miles of much-needed beaches. The best part of this is, it is accessible to people from Palm Jumeirah to mainland Dubai through a monorail and an underwater tunnel connects the topmost frond to the crescent. A six-lane subsea tunnel connects this island to the mainland to facilitate tourism. So all of this makes lives easier for the residents staying there. No need to settle for Google Earth views from now, you can just admire the handiwork while free-falling over it at 120 miles per hour via a skydiving excursion. Work on a second Balm Island, Balm Jabal Ali began in 2002, but due to the 2008 financial crisis, construction halted. If and when the island is complete, it will be 50% larger than Palm Jumeirah and feature homes built on stilts, a water park, villas, six marinas and sprawling broadwalks shaped into the words of a poem written by Sheikh Mohammed himself. Number 2. There are islands. Needless to say, this makes for a great spot for a vacation. You can tell by just seeing these images. But this was unfortunately stopped. It is by far the most ambitious one, I must say. The idea of a third Palm Island, Palm Dera, was first introduced in 2004. This is set to dwarf the other two at 8 times or 10 times the size of Palm Jumeirah. The volume of sand that is to be graded was 1 billion cubic meters as per the plan. By 2007, they had completed 20% of the project. But like the previous island, the work on this was also suspended in 2008. However, in 2013, Nakheel shifted gears and renamed the project Vera Islands, opting to create four smaller man-made isles. After the Dubai market crashed in 2008, the developers of this have revised their plans to save the project costs. So in 2016, after it was completed, it was opened for guests in the month of December. This 1.9 km long night market is said to be the biggest night market in the world. Opening of Thera's first large-scale debut named Night Souk is the world's largest night market with over 5,000 shops and almost 100 restaurants and cafes. If shopping indoors during a UAE summer is more your style, then I'd say this Thera Mall with its retractable roof atrium and over a thousand stores might just be irresistible. The mall will serve as the centerpiece of Thera Island's boulevard, which features retail space and at least 16 residential towers. It includes hotels, residential towers, sprawling malls and a maria. These islands make people who desire luxury and leisure yearn. Number 3. Blue Waters Giving Nakheel a run for its money, the Blue Waters project began in 2013. Opening by November 2018 with an observation wheel, Ain Dubai has put the London Eye to shame. You got it right. It is yet another world record for Dubai. It will be the world's largest. Blue Waters is aiming to become Dubai's family-friendly tourism hotspot. The island is broken into zones featuring over 200 retail and dining options, apartment complexes and townhouses, and hotels with prime beach access. This island is full of entertainment though. Number 4. The World Well, here's another victim of the 2008 financial crisis. The world's progress was halted. Speaking of which, the world is another Nakheel project kicked off in 2003 and consists of 300 small islands constructed into a world map. In 2008, 60% was sold to private contractors, but the global recession has again played its cards. This led to the seas of construction work. In 2013, only Greenland and Lebanon have been developed, and unfortunately, NASA images suggested that the islands were sinking back into the ocean. That's not the end. The plans were again revived. Despite this erosion issue, developer Kleindienst Group was hoping to revive the world in a big way with the launch of the Heart of Europe by 2020. Six Kleindienst-owned islands round out the project, each providing visitors with a slice of very high-end European life, complete with underwater villas aka floating seashores, five-star hotels and even streets lined with manufactured snow. St. Petersburg Island, which is shaped like a heart, promises to be the world's most luxurious honeymoon destination. When phase one of the project was completed, the first people moved into it already in 2020. Each island's name and area are based on the country they represent. Later, they also announced a very unique island in 2008 despite many setbacks. 
This is to be a solar system themed island named Universe. It is named Universe because it was to be based on the shapes of the stars, moons and Milky Way galaxy, but this was later removed and never revived. You'd be surprised to know that this isn't the first time the world has seen a man-made island. They were created in the early 20s. The first one to make this list is Harbour Island, and then islands like Treasure Island among many others followed. Countries like Japan and the Netherlands didn't just stop with creating islands, they also built cities and airports on them. We all know that Dubai is already home to many incredible constructions. From building to everything makes us go nuts. They didn't even stop at the world's highest skyscraper, the world's most luxurious hotel or the world's largest indoor theme park. Now let's dive into the details of the world-renowned Burj Al Arab. Did you know that one of Dubai's most iconic structures sits on its very own man-made isle? The Burj Al Arab Jumeirah, standing at 1,053 feet, is supported by 250 columns underwater held together by sand. It was completed in 1999 including two full years to reclaim its land. The Burj features a private beach for its guests, its own helipad and a new outdoor terrace that juts out over the ocean, all perks of having an island all to itself. That's all for this video. If you enjoyed this video, then consider leaving a like and subscribe for more updates.